As you know, thousands of people have already flown into Indy for Sunday's big game. But while all of the attention is on Indianapolis, could people have actually saved money by staying here in Fort Wayne? In our 15 Finds Out report, Super Savings, News Channel 15's Adam Widener went out asking that question. And Adam, you did discover some pretty big savings. That's right. Here in Fort Wayne, we're just little brother to Indianapolis, right? Nobody's really paying attention to us during the Super Bowl. But after lots of research, I uncover we had an offer any Super Bowl bargain hunter would not have been able to refuse. Oh, that's a, it's a great feeling to be here. It's a first for Indiana's capital city. It's a beautiful city. Patriots and Giants fans from all over the East Coast are coming for the big game. When you're rooting for your team and they make the Super Bowl with all the adversity that they've been through, that's uh, it's great. But while thousands of people flock to Indianapolis, what about Fort Wayne? For the past several weeks, I've been on a mission to find out if it would have been cheaper to stay in Fort Wayne for the Super Bowl rather than Indianapolis. Let's say you wanted to fly in Thursday and leave Monday. First off, you have to get plane tickets. If you bought a ticket from Boston to Indy in January, the cheapest round-trip airfare would have cost you $1,011. It would have been $976 from New York to Indy. Now let's try Fort Wayne. $257 round trip from Boston and only $315 from New York. Next up, hotels. Say you wanted to stay in the brand new JW Marriott Hotel downtown. Yeah, that would have cost you $3,000 a night with a four night minimum during the week of the game. That is, if you could have gotten a reservation. That's why people like Derek Villalobos of Brooklyn are staying in the outlying cities. We're staying in Bloomington, and uh, it's beautiful up there. We've been shopping around, seeing what's going on. The cheapest hotel I found was in Greenfield, Indiana, 35 minutes east of downtown Indy. The cost, $400 a night with a four-night minimum. But hey, on the bright side, there's a free shuttle service from the hotel to Super Bowl Village, so you wouldn't have to rent a car or pay for parking. Now, how about Fort Wayne? Let's say you stayed at the brand-new Hilton Garden Inn on the southwest side. That would have been $99 a night with plenty of availability in the middle of January. How much was the hotel you're staying in, if you don't mind me asking? Way more than $80. <laughs> Definitely. Economy car rental from Enterprise and gas for four trips back and forth to Indy came out to $185. And if you would have used the Super Bowl's park and ride shuttle service, parking would have only been $48. The cheapest tickets I found for the big game ran for $1,930 each. So without food, your grand total for a four-day Super Bowl trip from Boston to Indy, about $4,541. From Boston to Fort Wayne, though, about $2,816, a Summit City savings of about $1,725. I'll do whatever is possible to be cheap, you know. Your grand total from New York to Indy, about $4,506. But from New York to Fort Wayne, only about $2,874. A Summit City savings of about $1,632, which left at least one New Yorker saying, I should have went to Fort Wayne. <laughs> that would have been a better option. Now, I called five hotels on the southwest side of Fort Wayne today, and all of them have the same story. There aren't many people staying there for the Super Bowl. By the way, if you would have picked to stay in Fort Wayne, your total drive time during that four-day trip would have been more than 16 hours without traffic. Live in Studio 15, Adam Widener, News Channel 15.